Nina Turner went on CNN to make a strong case in favor of passing the budget reconciliation bill, which of course would overwhelmingly improve Americans lives materially, offering universal pre-K, paid family leave, two years of free community college. I mean, the list goes on and on, expanded Medicare. And what I love about Nina Turner is how she comes in strong and she does not let up. Here's a perfect example of that. I am glad that Senator Sanders had the courage to smoke out Senator Manchin by writing that op-ed, forcing him uh, to have this conversation. So conversation is always good, but it just can't go on forever. Because Brianna, the longer they are in talks, the less likelihood we're gonna have the strong package that is needed to elevate and to uplift the American people who need it the most. And this cannot be pushed down the road because we don't know what may happen in 2022. So we need to get this done right now. And frankly, I think Manchin is more progressive than he gets credit for. And I think Bernie is more pragmatic. I love that these two guys are talking. All right, Senator Turner, Brianna, progressives, Brianna, what, the, the, what, the, yeah. sorry, go on. The labels, I mean, I'm so sorry, pragmatic, practical. People are literally losing their lives and their livelihoods while people play games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, lo- I loved that final moment in that clip. How exactly can anyone claim that Joe Manchin of all people is progressive? Yeah, if you watch the whole thing, Begala, of course, is to be in that clip. Begala looks like he's you know giving a little bit of credit to Bernie for being practical, and uh, and then but he's giving Manchin credit for being progressive. I haven't seen it. I, I've never seen what he's talking about. But uh, overall, in the longer clip, Begala, uh, of course, sides with. And we can't have perfection here get in the way. That's the talking point they use every single time when it's progressives asking for something for you guys. Now, when it was a $2 trillion tax cut for the rich, the Democrats pretended to be against it. But was there a big giant fight in the country and in politics and in media? And okay, we got a compromise here. You can't ask for perfect, you can't ask for the whole two trillion for everything for the rich. Yeah, all right, let's get started a trillion or half a trillion or no, there was no such fight. They said two trillion, they did two trillion. There wasn't even a peep out of anybody. It yeah. got steamrolled, right? But whenever we're asking for something for you guys, healthcare, climate change, etc., they're like, hey, you can't ask for that much. We gotta be practical. Yeah. We gotta be practical. And isn't it so convenient that practical is always meant to serve the interests of corporate donors? That's what practical really means. So I love that Nina Turner immediately squashed those ridiculous labels, especially in regard to Joe Manchin. One more clip from her appearance on CNN, and then later we're gonna get to Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, other progressives who are just killing it in their cable news interviews, you know, advocating for the passage of this bill. Let's watch Nina Turner. And look, the overwhelming majority of West Virginians agree with this. West Virginia is one of the poorest states in the United States of America. And you have a senator who is set for the rest of his natural life. And so are his children and his children's children. And he wanted to negotiate away. Senator Manchin, what do you want to negotiate away? Is it child care? Is it the implosion of Mother Earth? Is it health care? What? Is it, Brianna? He is not saying what it is. So this is not about who's pragmatic and who's practical and who's progressive. This really is about in this moment whose side you are on. And let the American people remember this. Six trillion dollars was the original number. We are down to 3.5 trillion dollars. How low are we going to go to sacrifice the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class in the United States of America? America. Hell, the Senate just gave, I think, what, 10 billion more dollars to the to the, the military budget than what was asked for? She's right. In the next decade, the United States is going to spend a minimum of $7.5 trillion on the defense budget. The media never frames it that way. The media only frames the budget reconciliation bill as a $3.5 trillion spending plan. But when it comes to defense, they'll find ways to frame it as if we're not spending a giant portion of our discretionary budget on wars. Yeah, I'm gonna make one quick note about TYT here and what we're standing for. So Nina Turner is a host on TYT now. She's on Damage Report earlier today. She's gonna be on Indisputable. She's got Power Hour, that's just for our members. 
Um, but normally when uh, someone signs a contract with a company, they uh, it's exclusive and you're not allowed to go on other channels. We did not do that because we think Nina's voice is so important to the country that we want our, her on everywhere. So thank you to our members that allow us to do that so we can get our incredibly strong voice out to as many people as possible. All right, so I wanna move on to Cori Bush. Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman also had appearances on CNN. They gave their interviews together and I thought that they absolutely did a great job, including Cori Bush in this moment where she talks about how she got elected to Congress for a very specific purpose. Let's watch. The expectation is we will we will give you crumbs and expect you to be happy. What we're saying is I didn't come to Congress to continue to give crumbs to my community. St. Louis continues to get crumbs and we keep being number one for homicide, number one or number two for homicides, number one for police murder, number one for the murder of children. We keep having those issues. We keep having issues with ten uh, black children being t- ten times as likely to go to the hospital to an emergency room for asthma than white children. How do we fix those things? You have to put the money there. And so I didn't come to Congress to sit back and accept those crumbs, give my folks the meal. I mean, is there really any other way to put it? Yeah, no, I love it. That's just Democrats 2.0 right there. Uh, Jamal Bowman and Cory Bush, a lot of you guys helped uh, to make sure that they won. Uh, and so we're trying to bring positive change in the world. And they both of them did a fantastic job. You'll see more clips in a second. But now finally progressives are allowed on air, number one. Why? Because they have credibility. They won the races, you know, they're US Congress people now. Because they and, have leverage. Yeah. And that's and that's what they have. Exactly. They have enough votes to block the bill, they have power, then they're allowed on television. Back when we didn't have any power, progressives were persona non grata on television. They were not allowed on TV. Now that, you know, of course Nina's uh, here, but also former campaign co-chair of Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders is super relevant in the Senate, so they need these voices on. So, and now when they're on, you're, the television audience for the first time in their lives probably are hearing a progressive perspective. Yeah, wait, why did the voters have to get crumbs and the donors get to have the full meal? Exactly, exactly. And, and look, what it does is it creates the same distrust in our institutions that's really hurting the country during this pandemic, right? People campaign, candidates campaign on very specific policy issues. They have specific platforms that call out to the needs of their own constituents. And then they get elected into the system that overwhelmingly prioritizes the interests of corporate donors over the constituents needs. And progressives have been beaten down with this talking point of be practical, be practical, be practical. Well, isn't it much more practical to serve your constituents? That's the practical way to go about about it. But that's not what you're gonna hear in corporate media, which again, tries to beat down progressives, tries to beat them to submission. So they just go along with what corrupt corporate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are demanding. Now, speaking of Joe Manchin, you're gonna love this clip because Jamal Bowman called out Manchin's real interests here. Let's watch. Joe Manchin and others like him have a certain perspective that I think is incorrect. He thinks investing in a bottom up economy is entitlement. He claims he's worried about inflation. But I think we need to have a conversation about the special interests that support Joe Manchin and many others. Yes. And we need to understand that when we invest this way, it's better for the GDP and the economy going forward. But it's also better than for our well being. When you put money in people's pockets, They spend that money, it creates demand, which creates supply, which creates jobs. Yeah, he's absolutely right about that. And by the way, listen, it's not just Manchin. I'm hearing all sorts of establishment politicians, both on the left and the right, arguing that the inflation is is the main reason why we shouldn't pass most of the provisions in the budget reconciliation bill. They never talk about what is causing the inflation, right? So there are various factors, but two of the main factors, one of which I've talked about on the show quite a bit, the Federal Reserve pumping money into corporations, that's having a huge impact on inflation. But aside from that, think about what's happening with our supply chains right now. Truckers have quit in droves. 
because they're sick of being overworked, they're sick of being abused. And so right now there aren't enough truckers to essentially make this supply chain whole. So if you go to the ports in Los Angeles or in Long Beach, you'll see these shipping containers that have been sitting at the ports for weeks and weeks and weeks. And the reason why they're not moving is because they don't have the truckers to get the products to the people who have ordered them or to the companies that ordered them for their customers or their clients, right? now. This bill, the budget reconciliation bill, would create regulations that would ensure that people have paid time off, paid family leave, certain benefits that would make their lives a lot easier so they're not so burnt out and not as overwhelmed as they are now. It would overwhelmingly impact the economy in a positive way, but they don't want to get into the nitty gritty about that. I'm talking about the corporate Democrats here. Yeah, so I love that Bowman. Called out Manchin's special interests. And so, by the way, we told you Bush and Bowman would be the best of the lot, and here they are. They're fighting as hard as anyone in Congress. And so, again, thank you for making that happen. Okay, now, if you want to know how to get actual progress, it, one of the segments that we do on Power Hour with Nina Turner is what would Nina do? And in that segment, last week, we kind of figured out what Biden could actually do together as we as we talked it through. He could threaten Manchin's donors. Now that would be real leverage. You got to go to the bosses because Manchin's not actually the boss. Cinema's not actually the boss. The donors are right. They're just they're they're the bodyguards for the donors. So if you go to their boss, you go over their head, and Biden says to fossil fuel companies or or medical companies or whoever he needs to drug companies, and says, guys, you're gonna lose all access to the White House, and we're gonna come for you in a real way. This is just. In my, it's not nickel and diming. That's not fair because there's some real provisions in this bill, right? But this is not as heavy as they can go at all, right? Mm-hmm. It's a Biden bill, and if I was Biden, I'd say, look, you guys want to play with fire? We can go for it, right? And as Nina said in in that segment, not in the CNN one, but in the TYT one, she learned from a mentor back in the day that you got to say there's going to be blood on the floor, a little bit of mine and a little bit of yours. But trust me that if we go down this road, you're gonna bleed, okay, politically, okay? And if you say that to the donors, if Biden says that to them, that's gonna have credibility. And then they're gonna go tell their errand boy, Manchin, hey, you better make a deal, son, okay? That's how you play a hardball. Does Biden have the stomach for it? I would be very, very surprised. There are a lot of great ways to watch the Young Turks, but is there a best way? Of course, the best way is to watch live. Tune in weekdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You get our uncensored, unapologetic version of the news that you won't get anywhere else. Watch us live.